Okay, so picking up on what I was saying in the first part of the video. So you have to ask those four specific questions. So again, pretend you're player one. What if player two plays don't cooperate? What if player two plays cooperate? Then pretend you're player two and then pretend like player one's not cooperating and then cooperating. So you have to do all four of those steps. When you do all four of those steps, you'll have four, uh, you should have you know four underlines. And if you have a box with um, where both numbers are underlined, in this case we have negative five, negative five, uh, then you've reached an equilibrium. Okay? It is possible to have no equilibria. It is possible to have multiple equilibria. But in this case, we get exactly one equilibrium, which is negative five, negative five. So when you first look at the matrix, you might first say, oh, well, this is a better, this is a better scenario for both players. And in fact, it is true in a joint payoff situation, negative two, negative two is certainly better. And so intuitively, you may have rather have gone to negative two, negative two. But when we solve according to game theory rules, uh, we will get this bottom right uh, negative five, negative five. The reason this is called a prisoner's dilemma is because, in fact, you get stuck in this equilibrium of negative five, negative five, and you want to get to negative two, negative two, or somewhere else, and you simply can't get there, so it is a dilemma. Okay? So the key takeaway here is, in any game theory game, when you're solving it in a form like this, in what we call normal form, you want to make sure that you ask those specific questions in, the, in, in not necessarily in that order, but in, in a logical order, underline each decision that you make and then any of the boxes that have uh, both numbers underlined will be your equilibrium.